time may be ending, but it's never quite looked this good. It's been four years since Remedy Entertainment's last game release, and as one of the first games revealed for Xbox One, we couldn't wait to get our hands on its latest project. Could this be the most technically accomplished release yet for Microsoft's console? Let's find out. This is John from Digital Foundry, and today we're going to dive into the world of Quantum Break, one of the best looking games on Xbox One. It's a game powered by Remedy's in-house North Light engine, which is a DirectX 12 physically based deferred renderer designed to handle complex gameplay and narrative scenes at a very high quality. To kick things off, let's begin with the elephant in the room, resolution. When we first examined Quantum Break, we were surprised by the apparent lower resolution presentation, and judging by the reactions online, we weren't alone. But it isn't that simple. It's not just a 720p image we're looking at here after all. Quantum Break uses a temporal reconstruction technique, which combines data from previous frames in order to deliver results that are perceptually cleaner. You can see the impact of this technique here. Look closely at the text in this scene. As we manipulate the camera, you'll notice that the legibility of this text actually changes. When standing still, we see the real benefits of the technique in use here, which, when combined with 4x MSAA, helps create a clean image with very legible text. It's really only in motion that the 720p roots become evident. If we pause for a moment during camera movement, for instance, you can actually see the edges used here for pixel counting. Thankfully, with the plethora of post-processing effects in use here and the fast action of the game, it doesn't actually have a dramatic impact on image quality while you're playing. There are some side effects to this technique as you can see some temporal artifacts as objects passed in front of the screen. When taken as a whole, image quality is not optimal, but it has a soft filmic appearance that we actually quite like. This is a game that proves that proper image treatment can go a long way towards cleaning up artifacts born from a lower resolution. It's not going to be to everyone's taste, but the end results are a far cry from other 720p titles on Xbox One. But what is it about the visuals that led Remedy down this path in the first place? Well, looking at the visuals as a whole, it would appear that Remedy was aiming to capture the look of high-end, offline CGI rendering in real time. A key element in delivering such a presentation is global illumination, a lighting technique which unifies all elements in a scene by factoring in the behavior of photons bouncing throughout the environment. Due to the dynamic nature of Quantum Break, a fully baked lighting solution was off the table. After all, the game revels in large-scale destruction and quick shifts in the time of day and weather which aren't compatible with a completely pre-calculated solution. Using procedurally placed irradiance volume probes with additional pre-computed light transport data, the game is able to take into account all direct and indirect light producers within a scene. This is then combined with screen space light data and other elements such as volumetric lighting to create the final composite. So what does this actually offer to the player then? Well, as we meander through this particular scene, take note of the ambient light present in this area as a result of the indirect sunlight. It helps build atmosphere while creating a more realistic overall world to explore. It's an effective technique that is more flexible than some of the GI solutions used in other games, but its cost is significant. Another impressive aspect of the presentation centers on its character models. Characters were created using the likeness of real actors with their performances being captured using a custom multi-camera system designed by Dimensional Imaging. This is combined with subsurface scattering and excellent texture detail to help create striking virtualized versions of the actors and actresses. The hair and eyes can look a tad off at points, but the overall quality is very high. This extends to the effects work used in cinematics. A very high quality bokeh depth of field gives depth to each scene while realistic motion blur accentuates movement. In action, the cutscenes in Quantum Break are some of the best we've seen. The game is able to seamlessly move between very complex shots with loads of effects in play, something that may have been pre-rendered in many other games. It really is a new level of quality for Remedy. 
The Max Payne games told its stories using comic book panels, while virtually all of Alan Wake's story cutscenes were merely pre-rendered video. With a huge number of real-time scenes mixed seamlessly with video, Quantum Break really tells its story better than any previous game from the Finnish studio. Thankfully, much of this quality extends to the models used during actual gameplay. Looking at Jack close up here reveals just how finely detailed his in-game model is. This also applies to secondary characters. The student encountered early on in the game, for instance, animates very naturally while sporting clothes that appear quite realistic. We were concerned that jumping between live action sequences, cutscenes, and gameplay would prove jarring, but surprisingly that's not the case at all. Everything blends together very well. We already established that the animation used in cutscenes is excellent, due primarily to the performance capture, but once we get in game, things can take a turn for the strange. The vast majority of animation work is actually brilliant here. The way Jack moves through the world, the reactions to gunfire as enemies take hits, the slow motion effects, and everything else just comes together beautifully with a genuine sense of weight. Then you pull the trigger to aim your weapon. Remedy has clearly placed an emphasis on gameplay response as opposed to animation priority, which is great for gameplay, but it can look strange at times. If you're running to the right and pull the trigger, for instance, Jack snaps back to the left side of the screen with little to no transition. Fortunately, it's something you're more likely to notice while watching the game as opposed to actually playing it, so it's not really a huge deal, but it took us by surprise and isn't something we've seen in many of its competitors. Moving on, as we noted earlier, Northlight takes advantage of physically based rendering, and it really shows. Stonework, metal, and dirt all appear fairly realistic here. The implementation isn't the absolute best we've seen by any means, but it's definitely very high quality and a step up from games like Rise of the Tomb Raider. Texture work is mostly very good throughout, but there are some surfaces that can appear somewhat blurry, while in other cases we actually encountered noticeable texture pop-in, as you can see here. Texture filtering is also variable in quality, with some textures being adequately filtered, while others suffer from noticeable artifacts. Another important element in creating a consistent presentation lies in additional lighting and shading passes. Ambient occlusion is handled using a custom implementation based on line sweep ambient obscurance. The results actually appear rather similar to horizon-based ambient occlusion, yet performance is even faster. While scene lighting is very realistic overall, shadow quality sometimes suffers. In many cases, shadows remain decidedly low resolution even at close proximity. Look at the pixelation of the shadows against the wall in this scene, for instance. In other scenes, the transitions between quality levels can prove jarring, as you can see here. There's definitely a sense that shadow quality isn't quite where it needs to be. Thankfully, the actual filtering quality is high enough to overcome these problems in many scenes. But there's little doubt that this is one area that we expect to see improve on the PC. Speaking of jarring transitions, we definitely noticed things such as the tree lods popping in and out, along with the drawing of elements such as grass in certain scenes. Quantum Break also makes heavy use of screen space effects. There are loads of visible screen space lighting and reflections present in nearly every scene. It can definitely look quite nice, but the resolution can appear rather low, while visible artifacts become noticeable as you move around the world, something exacerbated by the temporal AA. Speaking of lower resolution aspects of the rendering pipeline, volumetric lighting makes a return from Alan Wake, and it shares many of its shortcomings. Volumetric light shafts are rendered at a very low resolution, and can sometimes exhibit noticeable pixelation during gameplay. In other scenes, these light shafts take on a rather interesting grainy effect that actually looks pretty okay in motion. While the precision isn't quite where we'd like it, the effect still brings a lot of depth to the presentation. Okay, so we've had a few nits to pick here, but now it's time to take a look at Quantum Break's signature visual effects, the crazy geometry warping time effects and physics used during combat. 
In action, there isn't another game that looks quite like Quantum Break. Triangles spill from objects as you use your powers, post-processing fills the screen, and colors shift around wildly. It simply looks incredible in motion. We also absolutely adore the sequences used to showcase the passage of time. When entering the lab here, for instance, we actually see years pass by before the player's eyes. The way in which the scene constructs, deconstructs, and reconstructs so rapidly is unlike anything we've ever seen in a game before. The fact that the player can retain control at this point makes it all the more impressive. We even see this type of stuff used in puzzle solving and platforming as time flicks back and forth between various moments. The further you get in the game, the weirder it gets. Then of course we have physics and destruction. While far from everything can be destroyed, many objects react nicely during gunfights, and the physics give the environment a sense of life. We especially love how objects go flying in every which way as you run at them using your time powers, and the way you can push around objects that are frozen in time, only to see them reset back to their original position after a few seconds. All of this technology ties directly into the core gameplay. The flow of combat made possible by the game's technology is just incredible, and it feels unlike any other shooter in recent memory. It just feels amazing to play. Whatever you do, don't make the mistake of playing Quantum Break like a cover shooter. This is a fast-paced action game where you have to be moving. Oh, and crucially, the in-game televisions that you'd expect from a Remedy game are back. And the best news is, Sam Lake actually stars in part of it. Awesome. One of the things that's particularly nice about Quantum Break is the sheer amount of variety and careful design that has gone into every scene. Remedy's previous game, Alan Wake, often devolved into a repetitive slog as you slowly worked your way through pitch black forests between set piece moments. It's a solid game, but it definitely overstayed its welcome. Not so with Quantum Break. Which is why we walked away so impressed with the game. This is the type of experience I love in games, and Quantum Break delivers both on the gameplay and technology side of things. It's an outstanding, beautiful shooter that is well worth playing. It does fall short in a few key areas, such as resolution and shadow quality, but it still stands among the most impressive titles on Xbox One. And with that, we're now out of time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And until time ends once again, this is John, signing off.